I figured it would be pretty useful to make a video about interviews, so you're getting an extra video from me this term. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> So I'm not in Oxford anymore, I'm back in the Welsh borders and I'm very happy to be here. I wanted to make a video on everything I did and everything I experienced in the lead up to me getting an offer from Oxford. Because I know this is something I would have appreciated a year ago. I'm going to give advice throughout the video but please bear in mind that this is a case study of just one person's experience. I really don't want to misrepresent Oxford or the Oxford interview experience or make people believe that they have to do certain things to get an offer. I simply just want to give some insight and perhaps some reassurance. So let's start at the very beginning because that's a very good place to start. <laughs> I did my GCSEs at a small rural school. I got three A stars and eight A's. This is slightly below the Oxford average, but I wasn't really bothered about it at the time because I didn't know Oxford cared about GCSEs. I know that GCSEs are a worry for some people though, so I'm going to make three points about this. One, Oxford contextualise your GCSEs. They will take into account the performance of your school as a whole. Two, GCSEs take up a very small part of your whole application. Other things are way more important, like your A-level predicted grades, your admissions test, and of course your interview. Three, there is only one way to guarantee that you don't get an offer, and that is if you don't apply. Please never not apply to Oxford because of your GCSEs or even your grades in the first year of sixth form, because you never know. The school I did my GCSEs at had a sixth form, but it didn't really tend to send people to university, and especially not Oxbridge, and it didn't even offer further maths as a course, and I love maths, so instead I commuted to a really big sixth form college. At sixth form I took fast track maths, where you do A level maths in one year, in my first year, and AS physics and computing, and I loved sixth form. <laughs> When I started to think about what course I wanted to do at university, I looked at doing maths, I looked at doing physics, and I eventually settled on engineering uh, because I realised I enjoyed the applied parts of my courses far, far more. I worked pretty hard in my first year and finished with an A star in maths A level and then two A's at AS in physics and computing. And after that, I was pretty sure that I wanted to apply to Oxford. My college was absolutely fantastic at supporting me with this. In my personal statement, I wrote about a scheme I did with a group from my school where we work with a company on a project. I also wrote about some work experience I did with some small local companies and I wrote about a residential course that I went on in Cambridge. And I generally just tried to express that I was enthusiastic about engineering. All applications for engineering at Oxford require you to do the physics admissions test and I thought my test went terribly. I thought my test went so badly that there was just no chance of me getting an interview. And this was a really important part of my application process because at the time I was obsessed with getting into Oxford and having like what I thought was a bad admissions test really helped me to put the whole thing into perspective and kind of let my dream go a little bit. This was actually a positive thing because it meant that by the time my interviews came around I was far more relaxed. <laughs> I approached my interviews as if there was kind of no chance of me getting an offer anyway and that I should just try and enjoy the experience and get the most out of it. I don't necessarily think this is the best way to approach the Oxford interview process but it was the best way for me because it meant I was probably the most relaxed and engaged that I could have been. So now let's get on to my actual interview experience. I applied to Wadham College and I had one interview at Wadham and another interview at Jesus College all on the same day. I did stay in college overnight though. Um, it probably wasn't necessary for me to do so, but I just wanted to do so. I'm given a free room and from what I know, free food actually for however long you have to stay in college for for interviews. I had an amazing room because some of the rooms in Wadham at the top have a beautiful view of the Oxford Stike skyline and I had one of those views, which was very inspiring. My first interview 
um, was at Wadham and it was with the th three tutors that I have now, which was pretty intimidating. I think my first question was how I was feeling. And then I think I was asked why I wanted to do engineering, which I'm pretty sure I gave a terrible answer to, but I don't think it really mattered because it was more of a easing me into the situation question. After that, they asked me about some of the work experience I did. Um, so I did a, some work experience at a small hydraulics firm. And I think they asked me, so, so how does, how do hydraulics work? Which was fine. They were just testing that I'd got something out of my work experience. Please don't worry that the tutors are going to ask you how do hydraulics work if you have not told them previously that you know how hydraulics work. The rest of the interview was very discussion based. So I was given the question, why does a drum make a different sound when it is tightened or loosened? So I just started throwing out some ideas, like it's to do with the wavelength that it can vibrate at. And I started talking about forces and simple harmonic motion. And throughout the whole conversation, I was guided by the tutors um, and I was given further questions and encouraged to make diagrams and given hints when I was clearly struggling. Then we talked a little bit about electricity and magnetism. And at this point I had absolutely no idea what they were talking about. It mainly involved me just making educated guesses, which normally turned out to be wrong. And then at the end of the interview, they test my maths ability a little bit and got me to do some integration. And that was the end of the interview. It felt like it lasted no time at all. And I actually really enjoyed it. My second interview at Jesus College felt a bit different. This time there were two tutors and the style of interview felt very question and answer. I was given quite quick fire questions on graph sketching, integration, differentiation, all that jazz. It really felt like they were testing my maths ability for about as far as it could go. It slowed down a little bit towards the end of the interview when I was given an extended question on a ball rolling down a slope and asked to like sketch acceleration against time, velocity against time for that ball given different scenarios to sketch acceleration and velocity. So if the slope was curved or there was resistance. I had a less positive experience at this college. I think mainly because I was the last person to be interviewed on the last day of interviews. So as you can imagine, the tutor seemed quite tired. If you go to interviews and you go to an interview and the tutors seem slightly less enthusiastic and it's towards the end of the day. It probably doesn't mean anything about your performance. It probably just means they are exhausted. I really didn't know how well my interviews went and I try not to worry about it too much, but I know that I enjoyed them and I was very happy when I got myself an offer. Get an offer, very well done. If you don't get an offer, so well done. You did so well to get that far in the application process and it probably doesn't mean at all that you weren't good enough in any way. It may just mean that the tutors thought that the tutorial system at Oxford for you would not necessarily be that productive. I just want to make one more point before I sign off. Oxford is a place for everyone. I believe that any person socially would be able to fit in here. However, it does not necessarily mean that your course that you have chosen will be the one for you. One of my friends applied to Oxford for Music, came to Oxford this year and dropped out after about two weeks because she realised and she'd known for a very long time that the course was just absolutely not right for her. She realised that she'd gone to Oxford because it was Oxford. And that's no reason to go to Oxford. Another one of my best friends rejected their Cambridge offer and is now very happy at the University of Edinburgh. And she knows that that was totally the right decision for her. Oxford is a wonderful place. I love it here. I'm sure the vast majority of you would love it here. 
but it just may not offer the course that you really want to study, for example. I hope this has been helpful. And I'm gonna say goodbye now. Goodbye!